neat new ideas. Um, up next is another um, former professor of mine. So Dr. Kurt Schwer, software engineer at Google and affiliate at, um, I'm oh, sorry, affiliate associate research professor at the University of New Hampshire Center for Coastal and Ocean Mapping Joint Hydrographic Center. So always a mouthful, but i um, excited to, to hear the, the, the other side of the coin here. So thank you. Great. Thanks for having me. Um, so my name is Kurt Schwer. I am a software engineer at Google and also at UNHC Com. Um, today, I'm going to talk to you about my particular story. So what you're going to hear is my view of everything. Uh, which spans several different organizations and situations. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you about managing spatial data at scale. And this is my perspective from being an engineer on Google Earth Engine and working with our users. Uh, so next slide. And so the question really is, who am I? Because that's going to bias all the rest of this talk. Um, but before that, uh, I want to say thank you to Matt and Brian, because this story will rest on their shoulders. Um, everything I'm gonna say, uh, you should keep those stories in mind and uh, I'm gonna build on top of that. So next slide. Going back in time to 2010, uh, I was at the University of New Hampshire and I worked with, I wanna call out Rick Brennan here because he was a, a co-author uh, on this work. I was trying to take uh, Noah's bag catalog of bathymetry attributed grids and turn them into a catalog that users could start really taking advantage of. And it's how do we scale data use? And uh, we tried to present one way of doing it. It happened to be built on top of Google Earth. Um, it was fun to do, but we didn't get very far. Uh, so the next slide. Uh, since then, I have joined Google as a software engineer. I work specifically on Google Earth Engine as one of my tasks. And that is a platform in the cloud for managing petabyte scales of data. And that's satellite imagery and uh, on this slide, the other geospatial data is the part I think is fun, and that includes ocean stuff. Uh, so next slide. Um, so what is this catalog? It's 600 data sets so far, and it's about 50 petabytes of public data. Uh, the majority of that is in Landsat and Sentinel satellite images. There's MODIS um, giving you uh, every two day, uh, two global images every day. We've got terrain and land cover weather and climate, and the rest of my team tends to leave off the next part, but oh, let's go to the next slide. And this is one of my favorite data sets in Earth Engine right now. This is the HICOM Global Ocean Model. It's 40 layers of temperature, salinity, and velocity. Uh, it's every six hours since 1993, uh, and you can, this data is all live, and people can go in and work with it and jump around in, in that whole time series and do analysis. Um, this is just the beginning of the process of where Earth Engine is going. We're 10 years old. Uh, we just have, we've been joined by the likes of Microsoft's planetary computer. And so this is a field that is just opening up. It's the, how do we deal with data at scale across huge numbers of users and huge numbers of data sets. So next slide. So let's talk about working through a story of a data set and how we might get work done with data. Um, and uh, so here we just have a Loctus monster who's driving around trying to do stuff in data, That's sort of how we can view the cloud. Uh, next slide. So let's go to Brian Calder's example and uh, say you want to work with a CCOM law and C data set. So this is something that we actually did at Google. I had just joined Google and had been at CCOM, so it was kind of fun to be on the other side of things. And uh, the law and C data is, is awesome. It's some really amazing mapping. Uh, so let's see if we can go ahead and use this in some of our work. Okay, next. And if you go in and you go from the overview page and you pick up the, here's a specific data set. Okay, I think I'm going to try and work with some of the Arctic data. And let's take a look at the copyright statement down below. There's a, find both of these statements here down below, read more. So let's go next. Okay, now we're in the details of this kind of copyright disclaimer thing. And we need to click another here. So let's click that here button and go to the next slide. And here may be a little unfair to CCOM because Brian showed you that there are actually on a different web page all of the terms in, that you need to know. But if you pick this particular data set, you hit page not found. And for a lot of people, I don't know what to do. I quit. I'm done. I guess I'm not using this data. Um, not really an option for us. We really want to use the data. Uh, so we actually worked with CCOM back 
uh, long ago, and we actually had to create a memorandum agreement and get lawyers to sign it. It took quite a while, and that data is now visible in Earth and Maps in that background layer. If you turn on the satellite view, you'll see this ocean data uh, in there. Um, this is a story of not success, but if we had to do this for every single data set that we work with, and we have over 600, if each one takes months of back and forth time, we're talking about an enormous amount of time spent with lawyers. Um, I talk to lawyers more than I ever want to, and I would like to talk to them less. And I'd like to do more things with data and less with lawyers. Uh, so next slide. So there's got to be better ways to do this. And Brian talked about ISO metadata. Um, in terms of the work that I do, I'm going to tell you a slightly different story. Um, there's two things called Speedex and Stack. Um, and I'm going to go through what each of those are, but basically it's how do we catalog and track the licenses that go with data. Um, and if you look here, there's one thing I like to call it in the middle is that um, the Speedex and Stack specs have a thing called a license and it has it's going to have some information about it. But if you don't know what to do, you basically just write the word proprietary. So we'll see what that means later on. Okay, next slide. So what if I could take this catalog of Earth Engine and I'm now I'm going to wear the hat of Kurt Incorporated, a little company that's going to work with a whole bunch of data and try and do some stuff. So what if I could write a little tiny bit of code, uh, and this is actually something I did just to try out, and say, let's filter by licenses because I think I know what I can do and I want what I want to do and under what conditions I'm working. So let's see if I can use the data in Earth Engine. So let's sort them by the number of collections in Earth Engine and what their license is. So the first one is proprietary. There are 617 licenses in the catalog saying they're proprietary. Oh dear, each one's going to take me a lot of time to figure out. I need to go talk to a lawyer. I don't have a lawyer because I'm a little company. What do I do? Oh dear. Uh, then comes a whole bunch of PDDL. If you go back to Matt's talk, we all in the community have a sense that this is data that is really truly public domain. So yes, I can use it. Uh, then we'll go on to, we have 40 some at CC by 4.0. That means I need to keep track of which ones I'm gonna use because I'm gonna to have to make some statement about what's in my final product. Then we go to CC by SA. I'm getting tired of dealing with licenses. There's 14 of these, but what is SA mean to me? Share alike, I don't know. Maybe I'll figure this out. Then uh, there's something called OGC Canada. I'm not sure what that is. It's new to me. PDVC probably sounds okay, but I need a lawyer again. CC by zero. Hey, there's one of those. Those are great. Um, then there's these NCs at the bottom that says no commercial work. I'm a little company. I'm out. I can't use that data. So pretty quickly, we've done a summary of what's going on in that catalog section of data sets. And we've said, okay, we can use some, not others, and some we gotta really want to use them if we have to work hard to get them. Next. So how do we keep track and figure this stuff out? So the top level thing to think about uh, that we use at Google is something called the Software Package Data Exchange or SpeedX. Um, I believe this might be how you pronounce the acronym, I'm not totally sure. But it's basically a software bill of materials that we've used for data. So software data aren't always exactly the same, but they're close enough that some of the stuff matches and some of the categories in the Speedix catalog of licenses is actually what we want in a cover data. Uh, other ones work equally well for software or data and some are just purely software. Um, so this is actually an ISO standard. Uh, it's been around for quite a while. So this is something we're fairly comfortable with and lots of companies and organizations have uh, good knowledge about this and the lawyers might actually have heard of this stuff before you get to them. Next. So what is the Speedex license catalog? It's uh, more than 100 licenses and each one is put into a table that has an identifier that you can use to just say with a few characters, I actually mean this license. And it has some general guidance on it. Is it uh, free software foundation Libre free, or is it OSI approved? Those are things that your lawyers may care about. Um, you also, as an organization, may have a uh, blanket decision ahead of time about what these licenses can and can't do, like you saw with Matt. Uh, those kinds of charts that show you what license and what processes you can do are totally awesome. However, this is kind of overwhelming. If there's more than 100 licenses, that if each one takes lawyers certain amounts of time to deal with, that's a little overwhelming. So next slide. 
So if we can boil this down to sort of the critical ones, like we saw in Matt's table, Speedex has entries for each of those. And you can say with a CC0-1.0, I mean this license. You don't have to have the entire text of that license in there. And that means that as a human, I can with be pretty sure you mean exactly which license. Uh, next slide. And I would like you all to read every single word in the CC0 license, right? No, that's crazy. Um, these licenses are big, and that's why we have Speedex being this catalog entry for it. Uh, so go ahead and go to the next slide, because we're not going to read that much text. So the real question is, why do you need Speedex? And the answer is, if I see a license on a web page, what if one word is different? There could be a not thrown in there, or the not could be missing. And that might flip the sense of your license completely. And if that's the case, if you see the text and it doesn't exactly match CC0-1.0, it's a little bit different, you're off to see your legal counsel again. Should you have legal counsel or you're going to go try and find some? And that's no fun. We can spend all of our time with lawyers and we'll never actually do any data processing, which is what I want to do. Okay, next. So when your provider gives you a Speedex license code, you've got some data, you've got one of these licenses here, these are the ones we keep seeing, you're pretty much done with your analysis and you've seen them all before, your organization has already made the decisions of like yes on one, no on two, yes on three, no on four, you know, whatever they've done. Um, or in this context, you must only use these licenses. Uh, that's great. And suddenly this process that was taking months and months for each one, turns out to be a five second job. And that's that's where I'm excited. Okay, next. So this only works when it's used across lots of organizations. So this data is coming from all over the place, going through different processing companies and groups and organizations, getting back out to the public, getting mixed up again, back and forth. Data can have a very tumultuous life as it uh, goes through its life cycle of being raw data and then products and then derived products and etc. Um, as a part of this, there is a, a specification called spatial temporal asset catalogs, which is trying to capture this process at a level different than ISO. This is about programmers and users of data being able to manipulate that easily and to be able to ask the questions of the data without having to do a lot of work. And uh, I'd like to call out that Google is a part of this. The little itty bitty icon on the bottom right says Google Earth Engine. We actually have a stat catalog and we work with all these other companies trying to make the specification better. Um, so it is a wide diverse set of folks that are all trying to come together and make data processing easy and to have licenses just be a part of the ecosystem. So you bring in a stat catalog, you can say, I want data of these licenses show me what I got, and then you can mix those. Um, life suddenly goes from being confusing, difficult, lots of meetings, to I have my system, I just press the button of these three licenses and we're done. Next. And being that I work at Google and I'm a software engineer, I have to show you some code. So here's a look inside of a stack catalog entry. And even if you can't read code, you can still see license colon CC by 4.0. So this bathymetry from X, Y, Z, Z, Y surveys is usable for your product or not based on that little license entry. So we're trying to make it that simple. And uh, I think with Earth Engine, we're getting there. And with more and more systems coming in part of this, I think licenses are going to become a part of a tool that just helps you get your work done. And it's not really a big deal. All right. Thank you for your time. That's it. Thanks, Kurt. Great for a, a great different uh, perspective on the other side of things. Um, if I could bring all the commenters on, I think we're on time, Deanne. I think you can uh, double check me on that. But we're going to bring on uh, Lindsay Gee, Guy Noel, Ed Sade, and Derek Hansen, um, who are our commenters for this.